Guy Louis de Borde, French, Guy Deby, the 28th of December 1931 to the 30th of November 1994, was a French Marxist theorist, philosopher, filmmaker, member of the Letterist International, founder of a Letterist faction, and founding member of the Situationist International (SI). He was also briefly a member of Socialisme au Barbarie. Topic: Early life. Guy Debord, also known as Debord Guy, was born in Paris in 1931. Debord's father, Marshall, was a pharmacist who died due to illness when Debord was young. Debord's mother, Paulette Rossi, sent Guy to live with his grandmother in her family villa in Italy. During World War II, the Rosses left the villa and began to travel from town to town. As a result, Debord attended high school in Cannes, where he began his interest in film and vandalism. As a young man, de Borde actively opposed the French War in Algeria and joined in demonstrations in Paris against it. De Borde studied law at the University of Paris, but left early and did not complete his university education. After ending his stint at the University of Paris, he began his career as a writer. <laughs> Involvement with the letterists De Bord joined the Letterist International when he was 19. The Letterists were led dictatorially by Isidore Iso until a widely agreed upon schism ended Isau's authority. This schism gave rise to several factions of Letterists, one of which was decidedly led by De Bord upon Gil Wallman's unequivocal recommendation. In the 1960s, De Bord led the Situationist International Group, which influenced the Paris Uprising of 1968, during which he took part in the occupation of the Sorbonne. Some consider his book The Society of the Spectacle 1967 to be a catalyst for the uprising, although perhaps a more immediately significant text was Mustafa Kayati's On the Poverty of Student Life, published in November 1966. Topic. Founding of the Situationist International In 1957, the Letterist International, the International Movement for an Imaginist Bauhaus, and the London Psychogeographical Association gathered in Cosio de Rocha, Cuneo, Italy, to found the Situationist International, with de Borde having been the leading representative of the Letterist delegation. Initially made up of a number of well-known artists such as Asger Jorn and Pino Galizio, the early days of the SI were heavily focused on the formulation of a critique of art, which would serve as a foundation for the group's future entrance into further political critiques. The SI was known for a number of its interventions in the art world, which included one raid against an international art conference in Belgium during 1958 that included a large pamphlet drop and significant media coverage, all of which culminated in the arrest of various situationists and sympathizers associated with the scandal. In addition to this action, the SI endeavoured to formulate industrial painting, or, painting prepared en masse with the intent of defaming the original value largely associated with the art of the period. In the course of these actions, de Borde was heavily involved in the planning and logistical work associated with preparing these interventions, as well as the work for Internationale Situationiste associated with theoretical defense of the Situationist International's actions. <laughs> Political phase of the Situationist International In the early 1960s de Borde began to direct the SI toward an end of its artistic phase, eventually expelling members such as Jorn, Galizio, Trochi, and Constant—the bulk of the «artistic» wing of the SI—by 1965. Having established the situationist critique of art as a social and political critique, one not to be carried out in traditional artistic activities, the SI began, due in part to de Borde's contributions, to pursue a more concise theoretical critique of capitalist society along Marxist lines. With de Borde's 1967 work, The Society of the Spectacle, and excerpts from the group's journal, Internationale Situationiste, the Situationists began to formulate their theory of the spectacle, which explained the nature of late capitalism's historical decay. In de Borde's terms, Situationists defined the spectacle as an assemblage of social relations transmitted via the imagery of class power, and as a period of capitalist development wherein, all that was once lived has moved into representation. 
With this theory, de Borde and the SI would go on to play an influential role in the revolts of May 1968 in France, with many of the protesters drawing their slogans from situationist tracts penned or influenced by de Borde. Topic. After the Situationist International In 1972, de Borde disbanded the Situationist International after its original members, including Asger Jorn and Raoul Venasium, quit or were expelled. Venasium wrote a biting criticism of de Borde and the International. De Borde then focused on filmmaking with financial backing from the movie mogul and publisher, Gerard Lebovici, editions Champ Libre, until Lebovici's mysterious death. De Borde was suspected of Lebovici's murder. Distraught by the accusations and his friend's death, De Borde took his films and writings out of production until after his death. He had agreed to have his films released posthumously at the request of the American researcher, Thomas Y. Levin. De Borde's two most recognized films are Society of the Spectacle and In Gurum Imus Nocta et Consumamor Igni after dissolving the Situationist International, de Borde spent his time reading, and occasionally writing, in relative isolation in a cottage at Champot with Alice Becker Ho, his second wife. He continued to correspond on political and other issues, notably with Lebovici and the Italian Situationist Gianfranco Sanguinetti. He focused on reading material relating to war strategies, e.g. Clausewitz and Sun Tzu, and he designed a war game with Alice Becker Ho. De Bord married twice, first to Michelle Bernstein and then Alice Becker Ho. De Bord had affairs with other women, including Michelle Mochet Brehat. Bernstein wrote a vaguely fictional but detailed account of the open relationships Mochet and she had with De Bord in her novel All the King's Horses. <laughs> Death Just before de Borde's death, he filmed although did not publish a documentary, Sun Art et Sun Temps, His Art and His Times, an autobiography of sorts that focused primarily on social issues in Paris in the 1990s. It has been suggested that his dark depiction of this period was a suicide note of sorts. Both de Borde's depression and alcohol consumption had become problematic, resulting in a form of polyneuritis. Perhaps in order to end the suffering caused by these conditions, de Borde committed suicide by shooting himself in the head or possibly heart on 30 November 1994. This was not the first time he attempted to end his life. De Borde's suicide is as controversial as it is unclear. Some assert it was a revolutionary act related to his career. Due to his involvement with the Radical Situationist International SI, as well as his sadness at the society as a spectacle being considered a cliché in later life, many think that de Borde felt hopeless about the very society he was trying to shed light on. De Borde was said to be victim of the spectacle he fought. Among the many commentaries on de Borde's demise, one scholar noted, Guy de Borde did not kill himself. He was murdered by the thoughtlessness and selfishness of so-called scholars primarily trendy lit criters who colonized his brilliant ideas and transformed his radical politics into an academic status symbol not worth the pulp it's printed on. <laughs> Legacy On 29 January 2009, 15 years after his death, Christine Albanel, Minister of Culture, classified the archive of his works as a national treasure in response to a sale request by Yale University. The ministry declared that he has been one of the most important contemporary thinkers, with a capital place in history of ideas from the second half of the 20th century. Similarly, de Borde once called his book, The Society of the Spectacle the most important book of the 20th century. He continues to be a canonical and controversial figure particularly among European scholars of radical politics and modern art. Topic. Written works Guy Debord's best-known works are his theoretical books, The Society of the Spectacle and Comments on the Society of the Spectacle. In addition to these he wrote a number of autobiographical books including memoirs, panegyrique, set mauvais réputation, and considerations sur l'assassinat de Gérard Lebovici. 
He was also the author of numerous short pieces, sometimes anonymous, for the journals Potlatch, Les Levers Nues, Les Chats Saint Verts, and Internationale Situationiste. The Society of the Spectacle was written in an interesting prose, unlike most writings in that time or of that nature. For Debord, the spectacle is viewed as false representations in our real lives. The spectacle is a materialized worldview. The spectacle subjects human beings to itself. Debord was deeply distressed by the hegemony of governments and media over everyday life through mass production and consumption. He criticized both the capitalism of the West and the dictatorial communism of the Eastern Bloc for the lack of autonomy allowed to individuals by both types of governmental structure. Debord postulated that alienation had gained a new relevance through the invasive forces of the spectacle, a social relation between people that is mediated by images consisting of mass media, advertisement, and popular culture. The spectacle is a self-fulfilling control mechanism for society. Debord's analysis developed the notions of «reification» and «fetishism of the commodity» pioneered by Karl Marx and Georg Lukacs. Semiotics was also a major influence, particularly the work of his contemporary, Roland Barthes, who was the first to envisage bourgeois society as a spectacle, and to study in detail the political function of fashion within that spectacle. Debord's analysis of the spectacleist society probed the historical, economic, and psychological roots of the media and popular culture. Central to this school of thought was the claim that alienation is more than an emotive description or an aspect of individual psychology, rather, it is a consequence of the mercantile form of social organization that has reached its climax in capitalism, as theorized by Herbert Marcuse of the Frankfurt School. The Situationist International SI, a political, artistic movement organized by Debord and his colleagues and represented by a journal of the same name, attempted to create a series of strategies for engaging in class struggle by reclaiming individual autonomy from the spectacle. These strategies, including «dayrive» and «daytournement», drew on the traditions of lettrism. As founder of the SI, it has been suggested that Debord felt driven to generalize and define the values, ideas, and characteristics of the entire group, which may have contributed to his hand-picking and expulsion of members. The hierarchical and dictatorial nature of the SI existed, however, in the groups that birthed it, including the letterists and the surrealists. Debord's first book, Memoirs, was bound with a sandpaper cover so that it would damage other books placed next to it. Debord has been the subject of numerous biographies, works of fiction, artworks, and songs, many of which are catalogued in the bibliography by Shigenobu Gonzalves. Guy Debord au la beauté du négatif. Often, it is suggested that Debord was opposed to the creation of art, however, Debord writes in the Situationist International magazine, Contre le cinéma, that he believes that ordinary quotidian people should make everyday quotidian art art and creation should liberate from the spectacle from capitalism and from the banality of everyday life in contemporary society in the society of the spectacle debord argues that it is the price put on art that destroys the integrity of the art object not the material or the creation itself it is important to note that debord does not equate art to the spectacle Topic. Films Debord began an interest in film early in his life when he lived in Cannes in the late 1940s. Debord recounted that, during his youth, he was allowed to do very little other than attend films. He said that he frequently would leave in the middle of a film screening to go home because films often bored him. Debord joined the Lettrists just as Isidore Iso was producing films and the Lettrists attempted to sabotage Charlie Chaplin's trip to Paris through negative criticism. Overall, Debord challenged the conventions of filmmaking, prompting his audience to interact with the medium instead of being passive receivers of information. As a matter of fact, his film Hurlments exclusively consists of a series of black and white screens and silence with a bit of commentary dispersed throughout. Debord directed his first film, Hurlman's En Favor de Chaudet in 1952 with the voices of Michel Bernstein and Gil Wallman. The film has no images represented, instead, it shows bright white when there is speaking and black when there is not. Long silences separate speaking parts. The film ends with 24 minutes of black silence. People were reported to have become angry and left screenings of this film. 
The script is composed of quotes appropriated from various sources and made into a montage with a sort of nonlinear narrative. Later, through the financial support of Michelle Bernstein and Asger Jorn, Debord produced a second film, Sur le passage de quelque persons à travers une assi court unité de temps, which combined scenes with his friends and scenes from mass media culture. This integration of Debord's world with mass media culture became a running motif climaxing with The Society of the Spectacle. Debord wrote the book The Society of the Spectacle before writing the movie. When asked why he made the book into a movie, Debord said, I don't understand why this surprised people. The book was already written like a script. Debord's last film, Sun Art et Sun Temps, was not produced during his lifetime. It worked as a final statement where Debord recounted his works and a cultural documentary of his time. Hurlman's en favor de Chaudet, Howells for Chaudet, 1952. Sur le passage de quelques persons à travers une assez court unité de temps on the passage of a few persons through a rather brief unity of time 1959 short film Dansk Fransk experimental films company Critique de la séparation Critique of separation 1961 short film Dansk Fransk experimental films company La société du spectacle Society of the spectacle 1973 Simmer films Refutation de tous les judgments, tant élogio costiles, qui ont été jusquici portes sur le film. La société du spectacle. Refutation of all the judgments, pro or con, thus far rendered on the film. The Society of the Spectacle. 1975. Short film, Simmer Films. In Gurum imus nocta et consumamor igni, a Latin palindrome meaning, We go round and round in the night, consumed by fire. Simmer Films 1978 This film was meant to be Debord's last and is largely autobiographical. The script was reprinted in 2007 in No, a journal of the arts. Guy Debord, Sun Art, Sun Temps, Guy Debord, His Art and His Time 1994, a sabotage television film by Guy Debord and Bridget Cornand, Canal Plus Complete Cinematic Works AK Press, 2003, translated and edited by Ken Nab includes the scripts for all six of Debord's films, along with related documents and extensive annotations. Bibliography Debord, Guy Report on the Construction of Situations Memoirs, 1959, co-authored by Asger Jorn, reprinted by Alia, 2004, ISBN 2-84485-143-6. La Société du Spectacle, 1967, numerous editions, in English, The Society of the Spectacle, Zone Books 1995, ISBN 0-942299-79-5. Society of the Spectacle, Rebel Press 2004, ISBN 0-946061-12-2. The Society of the Spectacle, Annotated Edition, Bureau of Public Secrets, 2014, ISBN 978-0-939682-06-5. La Veritable Cision dans l'Internationale, Champ Libre, 1972 co-authored by Gianfranco Sanguinetti, in English, The Real Split in the International, Pluto Press 2003, ISBN 0-7453-2128-3. Irv's Cinematographiques Completes, Champ Libre, 1978, new edition in 1994, in English, Complete Cinematic Works, Scripts, Stills, and Documents, AK Press 2003, ISBN 1-902593-73-1. Considerations sur l'assassinat de Gérard Lebovici, Editions Gérard Lebovici, 1985, in English, Considerations on the Assassination of Gérard Lebovici, Tam Tam 2001, ISBN 2-85184-156-4. Le Jeu de la Guerre, 1987, in English A Game of War, Atlas Press 2008, ISBN 978-1-900565-38-7. Commentaires sur la Société du Spectacle, Editions Gérard Lebovici, 1988, in English, Comments on the Society of the Spectacle, Verso 1990, ISBN 0-86091-302-3.
Panegyric Vol. 1, 1989, in English, Panegyric, Verso 2004, reprinted 2009, ISBN 1-85984-665-3, in Portuguese, Panegyrico, 2002, ISBN 85-87193-77-5. All the Guy Debord's books and films as well as unpublished texts were gathered in a volume of Irves, Editions Gallimard, Collection Quarto, Paris, 2006. The Proletariat as Subject and as Representation References Further reading Mario Perniola, An Aesthetic of the Grand Style, Guy Debord, in Substance, 1999, n.90. Internationale Situationiste, Paris, 1958-1969. Reedition Integrale chez Van Hennep, Amsterdam 1972, chez Champ Libre 1975, et chez Fayard 1997, ISBN 2-213-59912-2. Complete translations are available in German, Situationistische Internationale, Gesemelt Ausgabe des Organs der Situationistischen Internationale, Hamburg, Mad Verlag 1976-1977, ISBN 3-921523-10-9, and in Spanish, Internacional Situationista, Textos Completas en Castellano de la Revista Internacional Situationiste 1958-1969, Madrid, Literatura Gris 1999-2001, ISBN 84-605-9961-2. The Situationist International by Simon Ford, Black Dog Publishing, 2004, Illustrated. De Bord, Le Naufrager, Jean Marie Apostolides, Flammarion, 2016. Lipstick Traces, A Secret History of the Twentieth Century, Grail Marcus, Harvard University Press, 1990, ISBN 0 674 53581 2. Situationist International Anthology, translated and edited by Ken Nab, Bureau of Public Secrets 1981, revised and expanded edition 2006, ISBN 978 0 939682 04 1. Guy Debord, Anselm Jappe, University of California Press 1999, ISBN 0 520 21204 5. Guy Debord, Revolutionary, Len Bracken, Farrell House 1997, ISBN 0-922915-44-X. I Situationisti, Mario Perniola, Roma, Castelvecchi 2005, ISBN 88-7615-068-4. Della Critica Radical, Bibliografia Ragionata Sul Internazionale Situationista, con documenti inediti in Italiano, Gianluigi Balsebra, Bologna, Grafton 9, 1995. The Game of War, The Life and Death of Guy Debord, Andrew Hussey, Cape 2001, ISBN 0-224-04348-X. Guy Debord and the Situationist International, edited by Tom McDonough, MIT Press 2002, ISBN 0-262-13404-7. The Beautiful Language of My Century. Reinventing the Language of Contestation in Postwar France, 1945–1968, Tom McDonough, MIT Press 2007, ISBN 0-262-13477-2. Guy Debord, Andy Merrifield, Reaction 2005, ISBN 1-86189-261-6. Fifty Years of Recuperation of the Situationist International, Mackenzie Wark, Princeton Architectural Press, New York, 2008 ISBN 1-56898-789-7. Los Situationistas y la Anarquia, Miguel Amoros, Bilbao, Mutoreco Barutasio, 2008, ISBN 978-84-88455-98-7. De Bord au la diffraction du temps, Stefan Zagdansky, Gallimard, 2008. Fabian Denazi, Le cinéma de Guy de Bord au la négativité à l'herbe, 1952-1994 Paris, Paris Experimental, 2011 ISBN 978-2-912-53942-7.
Fabien Denaisy, Fabrice Flahute et Emmanuel Guy, La Fabrique du Cinéma de Guy de Bord, Arles, Bouches du Rhone, Actes Sud, 2013 ISBN 978-2-330-01756-9. Fabien Denaisy, Fabrice Flahute, Emmanuel Guy, Undercover Guy de Bord, English French, Paris, Artvenir, 2012 ISBN 978-2953940619. Topic. External links Guy Debord on IMDb Situationist International Online Letters 1957-1994 The Marxist Critique of Religion in the Films of Guy Debord Guy Debord's Howls for Sade Libcom.org slash library colon Guy Debord Archive a brief biography and several texts, including Society of the Spectacle. Comments on the Society of the Spectacle, 1988. Guy Debord and the Situationists. Audio recordings and films by Guy Debord at UBU. Web. Michael Lowy on Guy Debord, in Radical Philosophy. The Strange Life of Guy Debord, French. Films, writings and literature on Guy Debord. On Guy Debord's films. Guy Debord and the aesthetics of cine sabotage. Constructing situations. Guy Debord's detournement of fiction. Wall Street vs. the Indigenous Peoples Movement. On Guy Debord's work and the NGOization of Indigenous Peoples Movements. Class War Games presents Guy Debord's The Game of War. Emily Nussbaum, January 2015. Button Pusher: The Seductive Dystopia of. Black Mirror. Quote, quote. The New Yorker. Quote, Anyone who has skimmed Guy Debord's Wikipedia page or watched the American Music Awards could condemn our culture as a masquerade, a spectacle of virtuality. Quote,